I'm not crying, you're crying is probably the best way to sum up this week's 86 episode. Need a season two. I mean, on one hand, as soon as possible. On the other hand, take as much time as you need because this, this was a quality production. I could wait years for more. But to get that reunion, because you knew we were getting it this episode. The way episode last week ended, of course, you can't end the last episode for who knows how long without them coming into contact. It's just last week wasn't the moment. He was bloody, he was bruised, he was in a bad headspace. My boy needed to recharge, and what better way to recharge is with what is essentially Christmas, all things considered. And to see two separate perspectives of mourning the dead, you have Shin and, you know, basically accepting to move on without forgetting those that have fallen behind him, recognizing that he has people that are going to abandon him, even though they weren't fully convinced at the very beginning of this episode that Lena would be their commander again. We were going to get that reunion, but for Lena, she is firmly convinced that they're all dead, right? And even though she has her suspicions throughout the episode, to see her mourning her own dead, like her father and things like that, to then build it up to that reunion, do you think she'll recognize us? And to get them on equal playing fields. Shin's not on death's doorstep. He's not suicidal anymore. He wants to fight on the battlefield, but it's not the same. And I love that's the entire reason that, you know, basically best dad over here is letting them fight on the front lines because before there is a reason to try to pull Shin and company away from the front lines. They don't need to fight anymore. They should be kids. They should enjoy their lives, but they also have their own ideas of what it means to live in a world such as this. But now they have a purpose. They believe in a future. All of them believe in having a future and doing something positive with their life and protecting those that they care about. And to have Lena basically be firmly convinced it's just going to be a group of people who, you know, she'll give it her all. She'll make sure that they survive on the battlefield to the best of her ability. And that reunion of Handler 1 with the music escalating to see her go from complete disbelief to nearly bawling to then bawling her eyes out. You didn't need a hug there, you didn't need a kiss there, you didn't need anything overly much. The eyes and the face said it all. And I love the directing they did at the very end, seeing both Lena and Shin's hand come together in a shadow before it says 86. Beautiful touch, if I say the least. But I mean, it's just so great to see them come together and have hope. End the season with hope. Because, like I mentioned last week when the show came back after that 86-day delay... I absolutely appreciate the fact that rather than continuing just to kill for the sake of shock value, for someone like Shin, he needs a purpose. And if you're going to keep Shin around, which, I mean, you kind of have to, it feels like, at least for a good while, he is the crutch, he is the kind of backbone of this story. But at the same time, just having Lena there might not be enough for him. But to have his friends not abandon him, having them all feel like they have a purpose in life, even though they want to go back to the battlefield, they're shopping. They're drawing, they're building, they're cooking. They're feeling like people for once. It's not just them waiting and kind of just hoping that maybe they make it another day. It's now they get to enjoy a human lifestyle while protecting the lands that are allowing them to do so. And they have people such as Lena, their commander, Handler One, wanting to be saved there. Like, that's what makes it so special, is that it doesn't negate what came before and wanting to protect these kids. It's just respecting the fact that these are people who had a very different life and maybe in different situations they never would have picked up a bot and they never would have had to fight Legion. But they are some of the most skilled people for the job and they want to without disregarding their own self-worth. And that's what makes that kind of like Christmas present scene so great. Getting drawing utensils, tools, you know, cooking books, things like that. It just shows that they're going to have a positive life when they're not fighting on the battlefield. It's gonna be bloody, eventually people will die, fan favorites are probably going to die, but the fact that we got to this moment before it happened, it makes their pain and suffering previously feel warranted. Like, you know what, maybe their lives sucked for so long, but now they have something that made the pain that came before worth it because they actually have a positive experience in present day. And that's what's so incredible about this production, is how they use every tool at their disposal. The escalating in the music where they're building up that emotional vocals and it just makes you want to bawl your eyes out. The subtle reactions in Lena or Shin's face to see them genuinely happy and just proud of each other. All those little things just go a hell of a long way to make an anime production not just feel like an adaptation, 
but something that's there to enhance the source material. And pretty much since the first couple of episodes dropped of this show back in Core 1, that's all I heard from source readers, is that it just feels like an enhanced production of what they read. And to get those moments of forgiveness, I guess is how I'd put it, from Shin's side, the person who is the one who gave the letters to the sister, you know, wanting to basically be punished, but at this point, I think they've all been punished enough, and the fact that they can have those moments of almost acceptance and being able to move on. Lena, the same thing with the person who I thought her and Annette would never get along again, and look at them now. They're going to the front lines together, basically. It's just so great to see how far the characters have come, and the emotional strain of what came before and Core 1 and everything like that, it's just... It feels like the sacrifice was worth it for these characters to get them to this point. I mean, people, whenever they consume a project, whether it's anime, a book, a game, whatever, they'll put their own ideals, of course, when they're experiencing it. But ultimately, you have to look at it from a character's perspective, what they've been through, what they've experienced, and what they want to see going forward. And the, I think the idea of the Reaper symbol is the best way to represent everything we've experienced over now 23 episodes of 86. Before the Reaper, the Grim Reaper, the Undertaker, the person who would carry on the dead, would remember them, would basically carry them like a sin as a badge. Now the Reaper is no longer the same thing. I want the same symbol on my bot, not because I'm in the same headspace, but because I can acknowledge what's happened to lead up to this point without being consumed by guilt of the dead. I can accept that there are people around me who want me to live, and I'm not going to get in that same headspace just because some things went wrong in the past. I think that's like the perfect representation of the character arcs that we've experienced in this show. And from the flirty, to the comfy, to getting Kitty reunited with their family, right? Just everything about it just feels like it brings a giant grin to your face, and is easily one of the most satisfying stopping points I've seen for a first season of an anime. 86 has been around for a while, even ignoring the 80-90 day break between episodes 22 and 23 from episode 21 there. It took its time to come back, and this production should be an example, alongside some productions like Mishuka Tensei, My Dress Up Darling, in enhancing their source materials, bringing quality production and talented team to life, and to make it so... You don't see the same type of criticisms you normally do when it comes to an anime adaptation. Rather, you just see people saying, When I read this in so-and-so, I loved it, but the music here, or the voice acting here, or the directing here enhanced it so much more than what I initially read. You don't get to see that too often from a majority of source readers, but it's great to see what 86 has been able to do, both of fans of the source material and anime originals alike. Thoughts and feelings on this wonderful episode, season in general, on 86. How hyped are you for a season two? Hopefully someday. Let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoy and subscribe if you're new around here. Until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.